Um, so, uh, Aaron has an open consultation out right now uh, on our Internet Routing Registry Roadmap. And uh, you've all seen this on the consultation mailing list. I also, for those of you who were at Nanog, I had a chance to present it there. Uh, I want to tell you that the consultation remains open. Let me tell you what's on this roadmap. If you want to come up and talk at the mics, that would be good. Or if you want to send us comments to the consult, Aaron Consult mailing list, that would be a good idea because we're finalizing our roadmap very shortly. Um, let's see, Aaron's current IRR. We're using RIPE's early IRR code base, and it required a lot of work to customize work with Aaron. Uh, this has since been abandoned by RIPE. Um, this is a dated, older code base that our current IRR is based on. We have staff who have been with Aaron far longer than this code base, uh, far, far newer than this code base, sorry, the other way around. Um, it's based on templates and not particularly customer friendly. Um, so when you get an error, we're kind of going through a gateway, you don't get the real errors and that makes supporting it challenging. Our current uh, Internet Routing Registry has limited information responses, therefore, um, and it's very problematic for updating or implementing new features. Um, we get requests to update our routing registry all the time, and we kind of queued those up and did a consultation in 2015 about whether or not we should do this or not. And we, uh, the response was, yes, we should do AIRR update and uh, specifically work on improving the validity of the IRR data, working with other IRRs on authentication authorization schemes, providing appropriate proxy registration services, and integrating it with the registration database. So we actually put together a roadmap document. It's actually out in the consultation that says we're going to um, do a refresh of our IRR with a fresh code base. We're going to develop IRR capabilities integrated with Aaron Online. It will not be a bolt-on implementation. It will be inherently driven out of Aaron Online. Um, and we'll couple, of course, obviously, the IRR data will be driven off the registration data. We need to implement our PSL, um, which is the language used to do um, routing expressions. Uh, but at the end of the day, most of the people aren't using the full RPSL, and full RPSL is a little more than needs to be done. Uh, we're proposing that we'll do a, a simplified framework for RPSL to a subset um, that uh, covers the demand cases without uh, creating more work than is necessary. Collaborate with our other RIRs on cross RIR authentication. Uh, we will work on a migratory scheme for getting IR data into the new system and uh, work with other IRs on standards and best practices regarding how we do these things. If there's best practices, we'll try to follow them. Um, we'd like to have your feedback. We have an open consultation. It's running through the 25th of April. You can join the consultation list and tell us what you think there, or you can approach the microphones now. Anyone have comments on our, our, our roadmap? Yes, rear microphone. Kevin Bloomberg, uh, Toronto Internet Exchange. Um, IRR data is extremely important for Internet operators, uh, exchange point operators. Um, we use it to validate um, routes all, uh, on our route servers. They're critical. Um, Aaron is the only one that can actually tell us authoritatively if that route is meant to be mm -hmm. with that organization. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely support it. I support what you're doing. Um, I reiterate, I don't want garbage in Aaron's IRR database. If you don't own it, don't deal with it. There are lots of other IRRs that will deal with garbage data. Please keep it unpolluted. I know it's polluted today, and I don't have sympathy for those organizations that are putting polluted data in your database. Um, that's the first part to it. The second part is, um, I am perfectly happy to accept a simplified RPSL, especially if that will accelerate the development time mm -hmm. to get this done. Thank you. Okay. One question regarding garbage data. So we've got this um, requirement that a lot of people raised, which is 
migrate existing IRR data into the new system. So if you have garbage data and you migrate garbage data into the new system, then suddenly it's shiny and new and fresh data. Um, uh, no, that's not true actually. If you migrate garbage data, you end up with a new system with garbage in it. Um, along those lines, how important do you think migration is? Would you, would you think we have to migrate automatically? Do you think we need to have a one-time migration tool for someone to run? Do you think we need to have no tool and have people put in clean data from scratch? What's your thoughts on that? I think you sunset the current IRR that you have. You give the very, you know, at the end of the day, the small number of organizations right. that are using it a sunset window of 24 months, at which point you yank that from providing information to the other IRRs and you only use the new one. That is probably a safer way than migrating and 30% of the routes don't get put in and it, it, you don't know what's going to or not going to get put in. You know, there's all sorts of cases you're going to run into. I'd rather you just sunset it and people know not to touch it and um, that, that's my personal preference. Right. So no automatic transfer. Would you have a way of manually looking and bringing things over? Nice to have. That nice is something to have. That, that will delay the project. Got it. Uh, probably significantly. I, I don't support that. Thank you. Front microphone. Um, David Farmer, University of Minnesota, Aaron AC. Uh, speak up uh, and oops, sorry. into the mic. Yeah, <coughs> you are a big guy, and the mic is pointing yeah, no, at your I chin. Understand. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. Now I'm getting um, University uh, David Farmer, University of Minnesota, Aaron AC. Got it that time. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Um, this migration thing. I think the ability to migrate is important if you have a lot of data. If if you have been relatively diligent in your data and kept it there and you've got a lot of it, a mechanism to um, migrate that data would be helpful um, because you don't want to, it would be bad to penalize the people that have been doing right by the system so far. Um, you should give them some co cookies for have been doing that. Um, but we don't want to. We don't want to migrate the bad data. Okay. Do you think there's a lot of people who have been maintaining this information? Because I guess the question is, if if you're talking about a population where 95% of the people haven't been maintaining the data, then you're making a lot of tools for the couple who are. Um, I think there's a number of small entities that have tried mm -hmm. to do it diligently. Um, and they're doing it by hand, a lot of them. Yep. And so if they have to go rebuild it all by hand again in a new system, that may be a bridge too far for them. I don't know. Uh, and you're in, are you, is your organization in that circumstance? Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, helpful. Yes, uh, remote. Jason Schiller, Google ACO AC. I think the IRR needs to be closely coupled with the Whois data. Can we hear the community clearly supports or opposes this desire? For example, when a resource is revoked in Whois, it must be revoked in IRR. If a field exists in Whois and IRR, they must agree. Um, at the present time, we're planning a tight linkage, and that means if you're not authoritative for the resource, I don't expect you'd be able to announce routing information. Um, if it turns out that we end up with, an, someone has another requirement in that regard, um, come to the microphone now. I think you're creating a nightmare by doing so, but I'd love to hear it. As it is, we're planning a tight linkage. Yes, front center. Joe Provo, Google, Aaron AC. Um, to follow on uh, Mr. Farmer's comment and, and your concern about building complex suite of tools for the 5%, uh, I would suggest uh, thinking in terms of building an API where mm -hmm. the people who are smart enough to plug into it would hopefully also be in that 5%. And it would serve a, a migration API might actually also be useful for any sort of future IRR changes result, res, uh, which would have to no, rewind. Um, the API might have a life beyond this one-time event because we do have a transfer market. 
okay? When you say API, I got an old system with data, I got a new system, I have an API into the new system, an API in general to work the new system or an API that lets you pull data from the old one? The API is in the new system, the data is in the old one. I'm just asking what you're, you're specking here. I, I hadn't had a fully baked spec when I walked okay. up to the mic. I was merely thinking, hey, 5%, they should be clueful enough to not have to provide them a pretty web face, web, Got it. web interface. I'm okay. Sure. Got it. Rear microphone. Kevin Bloomberg, Toronto Internet Exchange. John, just to clarify, there's a couple hundred companies you are using IRR today, right. correct? Um, another suggestion that might be actually more economical, even farcical, that it, I'm suggesting this is, a human doing RRPT exports without writing any code is probably faster to just say, here, we've exported your data, here you go, email, than actually developing any system to automate the exports. Okay. It's a, it's a small subset of people. Okay. Wonderful. Does anyone currently using Aaron's IRR think you need a tool to help you get to the new one that will auto-magically migrate your dirty data over? Okay, that's helpful to know. A nice clean IRR that you populate yourself and maybe a dump of your old data if you're an old IRR user could suffice in this regard. Um, I'm closing the microphone shortly. Approach the mics. Andrew Dahl, maybe a tool that um, provides you a if you have the new and the old and you do a compare and these records are in the old but not in the new um, so that you can say that that's garbage or it's something I need to migrate. Okay. I don't know if that's a requirement, yeah. but Gotta that's figure an idea. Out if we can get a dump, maybe we can get something to process the dump in the new IRR to let you know what you still haven't moved. Yeah. Okay. I'll. I'll David Farmer, University of Minnesota, Aaron Easy. I'll just add to that. I think the sort of a, some kind of diff-like diff tool that lets me know, oh, this is here and not there. Right. And you forgot something, Dave. Got it. <laughs> okay. So not necessarily a migration tool, but a, a diff roadmap. Okay. Got it. I have people taking notes in the back. We'll try to update the roadmap accordingly. Okay, last chance. I will be closing the microphone shortly. Shortly as now, the microphones are closed. Okay, I'd like to thank everyone. Wonderful feedback. Um, yeah, okay. And then I come right back and I lead into the uh, policy block. John, before we start the policy yep. block, so it's been just a little heads up here. There are two policies coming up in this block, 2017-9, 2018-2, that the AC have noted are very similar trying to approach the same problem. So I just want to give a bit of heads up what they've asked to do here. We're going to have the two policies presented, discussed, and then there'll be the question on each, and we're going to deal with them in isolation, and then we will have a third session where we will discuss the merits of which one may be more preferred by the community. So just to give you a heads up, we will be first discussing them individually, and then having a section where we can discuss them as a which one do you potentially favor. So Excellent. that heads up. Okay. Very good. Thank you for that reminder.